Hi, today I'm going to talk to you about aphids, Murray Cod and backup pumps. And we're doing this bit of filming it in our new Indy 23 system, which is the ultimate home system we've built here. We'll very soon be releasing plans of it, but right here we see a swirl filter or settlement tank, and right here we see a mineralisation tank, which is going really well. Behind it a fish tank, another fish tank here. Anyway, we'll talk about that in another video. But right now, let's start on aphids. I want to show you some plants we have here that are badly, badly infected with aphids. Uh, we, we noticed the aphids on them not long after we planted them, now aphids are a really hard thing to get rid of in your greenhouse, particularly if it's the wrong time of the year because you may or may not know that all aphids are born pregnant. They're all girls, they're born pregnant and of course they start spewing out babies five to six days after they've laid the eggs they hatch and you've got more aphids, which incidentally are also born pregnant. So you know you're, up, you're fighting an uphill battle getting rid of the aphids. The only time of the year to really be sure to eradicate them is it just before winter when the seasons start to change the aphids then start to lay eggs that are boys and girls and they lay them the boys do their business of course and then the aphids kind of hibernate over winter so you really need to be able to kill them then to thoroughly eradicate them that's why they're such a pest in the garden but in our garden here we've got some beneficial insects we've got the um, predatory wasp which is just so small I'm sorry we'd take some film of it but this camera of mine is not good enough to film something so small and having the name wasp, don't be afraid, won't sting you, it can't sting you. But these wasps actually sting the aphids and lay their eggs inside the aphids' body. Sounds a bit gross, but that's what they do. And of course, um, it eats the aphids' body out and that particular aphid dies. Now, it's a bit of a losing battle for the wasps because they need to be able to lay, you know, so many of their eggs to try and beat the problem. We've got some pictures here which we'll show you. Now we've also released into our garden some lace wings, green lace wings. We purchased those as eggs from a, a place that provides those sort of things. In Australia there's a very good company called Bugs for Bugs. Uh, in America there are other companies. You can buy these things on and just post them to you in the mail. Place that neatly underneath the affected bush and those green lace wings have been doing their work. So hopefully we'll eventually beat it. We don't want to spray poisons around in our greenhouse. So the best way to avoid getting aphids in the first place is number one, raise your own seedlings. Don't bring in seedlings from another place because most times when you bring in seedlings, that's where you'll bring in aphids with it. That's what happened to us here. We're in a rush to get this planted up and unfortunately we went off to a seedling shop and we bought some seedlings. We're hoping to control the problem just to this particular greenhouse. The other way, of course, is to control ants because ants actually will bring aphids in if they can find them somewhere else. They'll put them on the trees for you uh, and they'll grow them because the aphids secrete a sweet uh, secretion which the ants love to eat. So they're the two. If you control the ants and you control where you get your seedlings from, you most likely won't get aphids in your greenhouse. Let's move on now and talk about Murray Cod. While we're on our way to see the Murray Cod, look at this silver bead, would you? Fantastic. Look at the size of those leaves. Is that healthy or what? We're growing this, of course, in our Indy 23 system in the wicking bed portion. And we've put some of these in here just to see how they go and have a look at that, would you? Unfortunately, we can see, I don't know if the camera can focus in close enough, we can see some of those pesky aphids here. But the ones I can see have all been stung by the wasp, and I wish you could see it, but there's a lot of these little wasps floating around here doing their job and stinging these aphids for us. Let's hope they can get rid of them. OK, let's move on to the Murray Cod now. OK, well, here we are at the Murray Cod tank, or one of our Murray Cod tanks. I've got in here some beautiful Australian native Murray Cod, which were actually given to me by a good aquaponic friend of mine, John Ma. John's grown out some fantastic Murray Cod. Take a look at this picture, for example. Just amazing stuff. Now, Murray Cod are Australian native fish. They, grow, they can grow quite large. They grow very well in tanks. They like to be crowded in tanks, in fact, because in the natural habitat, they're extremely territorial. So people have discovered to keep them in the tank, you need to have them quite crowded, more than you would think they should have because that way it kind of nullifies their uh, natural territorial instinct and they seem to be able to live quite happily together. But anyway, we're going to catch one out because these guys are more than ready to eat and we're going to process one. Now look, if you can't stand the sight of a fish getting its throat cut and processed, sorry to be that crude about it, then maybe you shouldn't watch this bit, but unfortunately it's what has to happen. If you buy fish fillets from a store or you go and have a lovely fish dinner in a restaurant somewhere, somebody has had to do just this. So. Let's have a look at it and see how we do it, and we'll try and get through it very easily and quickly. Okay, 
This is our Black Beauty 1.1 kit, which we've just finished doing oh, a month or so ago now. We've got it here under test. It's running extremely well. Got a nice grow bed, lovely lettuce and things growing in it, and we've got some Murray Cod in here. So this kit is on our website now for sale. Fantastic. We've got our typical heavy-duty Australian um, eucalypt lid, which is um, spotted gum. Very heavy. Too heavy for children to lift up. Uh, and that keeps kids out of the tank and keeps the uh, fish living in a bit of darkness, which they prefer. So we'll see if we can catch a suitable sized Murray Cod. Okay, after several attempts, I've got one that's a reasonable size. And here he is. What a beautiful, beautiful fish these Murray Cod are. Very pretty fish. Have a look at that. Beautiful fish. Lovely size. I estimate it's about 500 grams or one pound. So I'm going to do the business on it now. The way to finish the fish off is to give it a good sharp blow on the back of the head, like that, and stun the fish. While it may appear to be still alive, I can assure you right now it is totally unconscious. So we cut through the backbone, uh, finally finishing the, the kill off if it needs any more finishing, and we'll Remove the head because I don't personally don't like looking at the head while I'm eating my fish dinner. And there we can remove most of the head, most of the guts uh, in one go, and we can see this fish is very healthy, the insides of the fish is very in very good condition and um, how good is that, how clean is that, how quick is that, look at that beautiful fish now hardly even stop wriggling and soon we're going to cook it, I'll just give it a wash and to finish the job off nicely I will use the knife here to uh, descale it because Murray Cod are a fish with scales. Beautiful. You'll see that the fish is so healthy because it's got a good slime coat on it. It's very slippery. A lot of slime on it, which is great. That's the fish's um, own immune system, is the slime coat. So this fish is in really good condition. Um, we'll just dab it dry here so it's not so, not so wet and slippery. And shortly we'll give it another wash and some more fresh water just before we cook it. I like to steam my fish because I find it so simple and easy. Um, it's interesting to note that fish grown in an aquaponic system have no aftertaste. You find people often complain about a muddy taste or an earthy taste in fish. Well, that can come from two sources. Firstly, if the fish lives on a muddy bottom of a river or something and uh, is in the habit of dwelling down there for a bit too long, that's one way. The other way is too many nitrates in the water that it's in. And this can be a problem in aquaculture farmed fish because the nitrates get quite high. They have to dump the water every other day um, and replace it to try and keep the nitrates down. But in our aquaponic system, we don't have that problem because we grow plants and we reduce up the nitrates that way. The fish we produce always tastes absolutely fantastic. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I like fish anyway, but here we go. Now, I like to steam my fish, as I said just a minute earlier, and I've got the steamer thing that I bought a number of years ago. We've got a simple little gas stove here, and we just have to add a little bit of water to it to um, just below the grate that's in there. Okay, because we've got this nice grate here, see so we can actually pull the fish out later on and serve it if we want to. And so we'll just put the, uh, the fish in there. Um, I've cut up some nice chives that we got out of our garden before, some garlic chives, and I'll just stuff the fish with a bit of that, and um, that will give it a little bit of nice flavour. Uh, we'll, we'll put the fish in place now, and we'll place it in our steamer. We'll also cut a little bit of lemon, pour a bit of lemon juice over it, which is always nice with fish, plenty of lemon juice that will go into the fish and we'll put a bit of the rind in there too so that we can leave that up the end of the, the thing, we'll add a little bit of flavour, a bit more lemon flavour. Okay, then all we've got to do is start this, start this little cooking machine and we'll be right. Yes, it's a weight. Now I know that many of you watching will have all sorts of wonderful recipes for steaming fish and that's fine. You do whatever makes you feel good. But this is the way I like to do it. Simple, straightforward, and I enjoy the most beautiful fish dinners out of our system. 
just steaming it or smoking it. It's just fantastic. Okay, we'll leave that go for a while. We'll come back to that shortly. And let's go and talk about backup pumps. I just don't understand why people would not have a backup system on their aquaponic system. It's just devastating. If you raise fish for a whole year, get them up to a beautiful size, and then one night a thunderstorm passes through your district somewhere and knocks the power supply out, and you've got several hours without power, and next thing you have dead fish on your hands. It's just devastating, and it's so simple to do. We have backup boxes here which we make here and, and, and distribute. We have both an Australian, English and American versions of them to suit the power supplies in all those places. And what that does is it's got a little transformer in it, it's got a relay in it, and when it's plugged into the mains power supply, it holds the contacts of the relay open so that no power can flow through. Then we have it connected to a battery bank and to a pump that are 12 volts DC. What happens if the power goes out? Instantly those contacts close and a circuit is made and it starts the pump up. Now we'll just demonstrate that in just a minute. Now you might ask, well I'm going to have a battery backup bubbler. Well that's okay too, but it's much better to have a pump. And I'll tell you why. Because the pump will not only disturb the surface of your fish tank to inject oxygen into it and assist the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide, but it will also circulate the water in the tank, which is very important and becomes more and more important as the length of time goes by that the power is out because otherwise you'll have dead spots in the tank that are very low in DO and that's not good for the fish. Okay, let's demonstrate this working and uh, we'll see how it goes. This is the business end of the backup system. You can see it's just a simple right angle bend. We've got it held into the IBC with a, a, a couple of cable ties. Then on this end, there you go, the cable tie just broke. On this end we've just got a simple 12 volt pump that is running back to our battery bank. You can see we've had to join the wires here, we've done a good solder joint, we've sealed it up with some shrink wrap so that we don't get any water leakage, any problems. We'll just put this back in place and there we are, it's in place waiting to work. It's just that simple. Now if we can just swing the camera over here, we can see we've got this box here which has got the relay and the little transformer inside it for safety. Uh, we've had all these passed by the authorities, they're perfectly safe and they're well made. One line here goes down to our battery bank, which is a huge battery bank, and this other line goes down here and to our pump. So now I'll simulate um, the power failing by pulling out the mains power cord that we have in here. I'll just pull that out, our power's gone off, and you can see instantly what has happened. Our 12 volt pump has started up and is spraying a lot of water over the surface of the tank. Can you see the water spraying over the surface there? You can see that the water is very disturbed and there's a lot of bubbles being added to the water and it's just doing a great job. Now that can run on our battery bank for several hours. Um, in fact, several days the battery bank we've got, we've got a huge one. But if you were to have just an ordinary car battery that say costs around $100 and say the 50 amp hour battery, that pump will run for about five hours on that. So that's pretty good. If you want it to run longer, you just need more battery. That's the simple answer on backup systems. Now we'll just simulate turning the power back on, the mains power comes back on, the authorities have gone up the road and fixed everything and immediately the pump stops and if we've got a battery charger on our battery it will start to charge up again. Now that's the most wonderful safety feature you can have for your fish. Just to demonstrate, on the second tank in our ND23 system we've got catfish in this tank and they're pretty hardy, they'll withstand a lot of bad treatment. But just the same, we don't want to lose any of our catfish. Some of them are over a year old now, and they're, you know, we put them in there from another system. And here's our novel, here we can see from the 12 volt backup system, and um, it's all ready to go. As soon as the power fails, it will come straight back on. That's backup systems, fantastic. So easy to do, and in actual fact, so low cost. It's just ridiculous if you don't do it. Okay, while we're waiting for this fantastic Murray Cod to cook, we're about five minutes into it already. But I want to talk to you about the next thing that's going to be happening, the next great event. I'm actually off to Texas in the USA in about a week and a half, not quite two weeks' time. And I'll be in Texas at September the 14th, 15th, 16th and 17th, running two-day extended Discover Aquaponics seminars. Now, these are going to be absolutely great events. If you live in the USA, you really ought to attend. If you're really interested in aquaponics and you want to get a great grounding on it, it's going to be in a place called Spring, Texas. Uh, the uh, place we're going to be holding it, is both a small aquaponics farm and also a training institute which is called Lone Star in Montgomery. 
beautiful facilities. It's going to be a wonderful time, and I really want to see you there because I'm going all the way to the USA just to put this on, and it's going to be fantastic. We're going to have some other speakers there as well. Mike Cosman will be there talking about greenhouses and protected aquaponics for those people that come from cold weather climates. It's not just about hot weather aquaponics. Don't get that idea in your head. It's uh, going to be about aquaponics that you can do anywhere at all, anywhere in the world. Okay, let's check on this fish now and see how it's going. While we're waiting for the fish to finish cooking, I just want to reiterate about the Texas event. Now, the way to book for that is to go to aquaponicsinstitute.com and look through the menu and you'll see events and you'll see the Texas event. Now, that's aquaponicsinstitute, one word, dot com. Easy to find. Or if you can't find it that way, go to my website and follow the links to the place to book in. But it's best to go to aquaponicsinstitute.com and look for the Texas event. It's not hard to find and uh, you'll be able to book in there. Don't waste any time because it's a bit over a week and a half to go, so you better make your arrangements really fast. Okay, let's wait a bit. We'll see the fish cooked in a few minutes and we'll be able to have a little bit of a feed. Thank you. Okay, well, we've rearranged things slightly and the fish is now cooked, so I'm about to get it out and enjoy my feast. I'll just take it off the stove there and we can see the fish is just absolutely beautifully done. Absolutely beautifully done. And now I'm going to add some lovely salad that my dear wife has prepared. I've got to tell you, all these things, except for the avocado, have come out of our garden. Isn't that fantastic? So, tomato, lettuce, beautiful lettuce. We grow so much lettuce, it just isn't funny. <clears throat> I'll get some wonderful avocado, some cucumber. What about a bit of carrot and capsicum? bit more lettuce, a bit more tomato. What else can I have? Maybe some more cucumber. Beautiful. What about that? Okay. Let's get some salt on it. A little bit of salt. And of course some more lemon juice. Whoa, how good is that? And um, away we go. Thank you. Bon appetit. This is the good side of having an aquaponic system of your own. Mm, that's as good as you'd get anywhere, anytime. Just absolutely beautiful. Come on, Doug, come and have some fish. Come and try it out. Just come and try a little bit of fish. Look at that beautiful white flesh cooked to absolute perfection. A little bit of salt, a little bit of lemon. Oh. Absolutely fantastic. I know, um, I'll just give you a bit, Doug. Sorry it's your hands, but there you go. Just too good not to share. Unbelievable. I know you'll probably have a favourite recipe of your own on how to cook your fish, but this suits me just fine. I like things fairly plain and ordinary, but hey, what's plain and ordinary about this? Unbelievable. Mm. Now, don't forget... Pardon me for talking while I'm eating. Don't forget to come and see me in Texas if you're in the USA in just under two weeks' time. Remember that address, aquaponicsinstitute.com. Look for the drop-down and book your seat there. Don't miss out. It's going to be a fantastic event. Okay. Sorry, I've got to eat now. A bit more salt for the tomato. My happy or what? 